is maybe something will straighten out now, Gene. Thank you for listening to the uh, program. The phone number is 855-407. Let's move right along to something else I must play for you on the show. Tomorrow is a big day for the impeachment scandal. And everyone knows the word Bolton now. He's probably as well known as the coronavirus uh, worldwide. In fact, he is the coronavirus of the Trump uh, uh, campaign. And uh, I've warned everyone about Bolton for a long time. I don't know the man, never met the man. I know that he, he was advised. Trump was leery of him way from the beginning. I told you the story. I have to tell it again and again and again. It must have been December 2016 after Trump won. I was at Mar-a-Lago, uh, went over to him, said hello, put his arm around me, said I wouldn't be president without this man. I'm very proud of that. To be an immigrant son and help, help elect a president is a huge accomplishment, especially a president as great as Donald Trump. See, I don't listen to the detractors. I know how dirty they are. And the louder they scream, the dirtier they are, by the way. But that's a separate story. So he invites me over for ice cream, which I don't eat. I wish I hadn't had that bowls of ice cream looking back now, nor the hot dogs with what's happened to me. But I don't eat much ice cream. But for the president, I ate ice cream. I ate a lot of ice cream. We talked. And I swear, I'm not making this up. There was Bolton all the way in the back of Mar-a-Lago, like circling. He was like on the perimeter. It was like a metaphor. And he looked over at him and he said, what do you think of him? I said, don't go near him. I said, he gave us the Iraq war with a false promise of uh, weapons of mass destruction, which, by the way, Sean Hannity ate lock, lock, stock and barrel. And it worked for Sean Hannity. Sean became very rich and very famous peddling that lie. Now Sean Hannity's the big, big number one voice and conservative everything. Sean is the one, as far as I can tell, who advised the president to take Bolton in. But he wasn't alone. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. There's some other people who consider themselves great Americans, by their own estimation, who also are on the Bolton team. They're going to make believe they hated him all along. The same people who put Trump down for a year, put everyone who voted for him down, uh, and then suddenly jumped aboard the, the Trump train, we're also on the Bolton train, and now they're going to make believe they're, they don't know who Bolton is. But I was on to this guy for a long time, not because I know him, never met him. It's true I don't like men with that kind of mustache. They're usually hiding dirt. Anyone with that big a mustache, there's something behind. Okay, I'm, I'm being funny now in a certain way, maybe not funny. I don't like the look. It's unhygienic. This, a guy who has a mustache like that's hiding, I, I can't explain it. It's like a handwriting analyst. analyst. I'm a beard analyst. It's like I watch car shows at night. I'm sorry, I don't like the guys with the crank beards. I can't watch them. I don't know how, no matter how good they are on cars, why do they have to have like crack beards? Or like they have crank beards, like they, weird, uh, ugly mustachios. Something's, but anyway, getting back to Bolton, listen to this now. We put together a montage for you on the Savage Nation. The out of work U.S. Ambassador John Bolton, he's, you don't know who he is. Most people never heard of him. He's everywhere on television, mainly on uh, the girly show on Fox News. He's a little guy who looks like a walrus. He has an outdated walrus-like mustache that's very uncomely. And it kind of it just gives me a creep factor. Nevertheless, all right, every, to each his own. I have a beard, so if he likes to have a walrus-like beard, I don't get it. Uh, I'm just identifying So, him. John, would you like to put on a uniform and lead the troops in the charge against Russia? I mean, you should lead by example, John. I mean, you're calling for some kind of action, aren't you, John? Instead of sitting on your little behind in a studio or in your house in Washington, wherever you may live, John, why don't you go back, uh, take a position in the U.S. military? You must have some friends there. Put a uniform on and lead the charge. Go to Ukraine, fight with the, uh, with the uh, Ukrainians. And lead a charge against the separatists, John. Lead by example, as they do in Israel. Now, for anyone to call you Ambassador John Bolton is sickening. You never were an ambassador. You always were an embarrassment, not an ambassador. The day J Bolton starts his job as the new national security advisor, war with Russia looms. Can you believe it? I warned you. I said to you Bolton was a warmonger neocon. You know who he is, don't you? Walrus, who's been waiting in the outer rings for uh, two years now. Mar-a-Lago, he was circling the outer ring, ring. He didn't even get near the buffet. He was in the outer ring circling, 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 circling. Now they give him the job. Bingo, we're at war already with Russia and Iran. The first, that's the first day. I warned you who this maniac was. Why Trump was talked into hiring the walrus, I'll never understand. Maybe we'll play I Am the Walrus by the Beatles and we'll get the answer. Why am I so angry about this appointment of Bolton? What does it mean to me? Not, I wasn't looking for the job. Please don't tell me that.
war should be the last resort in diplomacy, not the first. This schmuck has it upside down. This draft dogging, dodging chicken hawk has everything backwards. He wants war before negotiation. It was Bolton who faked the WMD story to trick old poor dumb Bush into the Iraq war. How many men died in that? How many Iraqis died in that? Is Iraq now a better place for Christians than it was under Saddam? You don't know that side of the story, do you? You know that looking back, Saddam actually protected the Christians? You don't know any of this. Again, it's a, not a complete story to most of you. All this war for nothing in Iraq, nothing makes no sense. We were leaving Syria, don't you understand? We were getting out. Trump said, I want out. Who said they wanted him to stay in there? Warmongers. Warmongers. Who's a warmonger? Bolton, the walrus. Where'd he come from? Outer ring of Mar-a-Lago, circling the buffet. Wasn't allowed to dine. Outer perimeter. Wanted the job. Begging. Begging. Circling begging. I was asked what I thought of the walrus a while back, and I said, keep the walrus away. The walrus is a danger to the stability of America and the world. That's all. Let's leave it at that. I won't say who, they what, put a when. warmonger into the uh, national security advisor position. The walrus, the mustache job. A man who gave us the Iraq war. John Bol Bolton, the Bush era war hawk. Who was very about leery. All right, we get it. There's a montage to show you that I, I told Trump not to hire him. Now, Trump came out the other day. When the book allegedly is going to, you know, blow the whistle on something he said about Ukraine, this and that. Uh, and he said, I, I got rid of Bolton because he would have started World War Six. Remember that? He should have listened to me, honest to God. Eventually he may. He eventually he may. I mean, we had hot dogs on Air Force One a few months ago and we talked about stuff. He asks, you know, he always asks people who are near him. It's interesting about Donald Trump. I'm not giving anything away. This is like a side effect of reality here. Uh, he asks all the people he takes close to him, which aren't too many, what they think about big world events. And he, he sorts himself. He doesn't just rely upon experts. He, he relies upon experts, but not solely experts. He asks people he considers to be bright, who he'll take and, and trustworthy near him. He'll ask him, what do you think about North Korea? Or what do you think about Syria? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? This is how he makes a decision. It's a very interesting way of coming to it, which is why he's upsetting the Washington establishment, because he doesn't go to normal people in the chain of command, like an ambassador or an expert on a the subject. They have knowledge. They may know certain things, but they may have become so locked into the doxy of their position that they can't think outside the doxy of their position. Trump does, which is why he's hated by the establishment. He's actually an anti-establishment uh, uh, president. He's actually an anti-establishment person. Now, speaking of the impeachment, tomorrow we're going to find out an awful lot. They're going to vote on whether they have witnesses or not, whether the walrus gets to talk or not. I can't wait to be here. Can you? Be back in a minute right here on The Savage Nation. Home of borders, language, culture, The Savage Nation. It is uh, quite a business to be in right now in the media. Tomorrow is going to be a, a big day. It's going to be a huge day tomorrow. Allegedly, McConnell is saying he has the votes to end the impeachment over the weekend. It's being reported by ABC News. If you're looking just for news, it says uh, GOP moves to block witnesses. That would be uh, uh, the mustache job. It says the Senate trial could be over by the weekend if Republicans have the votes, and they may have the votes. And if it's over, that means the president gives a State of the Union address on Tuesday without being hampered by the uh, night school lawyers who are trying to destroy him. Now, they're just put there by Pelosi. Now, where is Pelosi, by the way? She unleashes the dogs, the night school lawyers like uh, Nadler and that other corrupt bum, Chef, and uh, then she disappears to Israel last week. Isn't that interesting? I'm Yisrael Chai by the Wailing Wall. Wow, what a phony she is. But let's see what happens tomorrow, huh? With God's will and your listenership, I shall return. The Westwood One Podcast Network. <laughs>